Welcome to my talk on automating fetal biometry estimation from standard ultrasound planes. My name is Sophia Bano and I am from the Welcome APSRC Center for Interventional and Surgical Sciences, University College London. Ultrasound examination during the second trimester can assess fetal size according to standardized biometry charts. This biometry can in turn help in assessing fetal well-being, including gestational age and growth, or monitoring for any abnormality. In order to obtain reproducible and accurate fetal biometry, the sonographer requires to first identify the three standard ultrasound planes, and then to manually mark key landmarks on these planes to clinically measure biometry. The three standard ultrasound planes used for fetal biometry are the transventricular plane in the head, transabdominal plane in the abdomen, and femur plane. For the sake of simplicity, I will refer to these planes as head, abdomen, and femur planes in the following slides. Listed here are the measurements which are obtained by the sonographer by manually placing markers on the key landmarks in these. Uh, in these ultrasound planes. This is a time-consuming task, especially for less experienced sonographers, and it is subject to high intraoperator and interoperator variability. Automating fetal biometry on the standardized plane can help in minimizing these variabilities, especially in the case of less experienced sonographers, and this may also serve as an expert for training. Unlike existing methods that only rely on obtaining measurements for a given plane, in this work, we propose a unified automated framework that estimates all relevant measurements needed for fetal biometry assessment from all three standard ultrasound planes. This is done by performing multi-class segmentation in order to identify and segment head, abdomen, and femur anatomies in the three standard ultrasound planes. For this task, we use two state-of-the-art segmentation algorithms, namely UNET and DeepLab V3+, with different backbones, and performed an ablation study to obtain the best performing network. Next, we perform region fitting on the obtained segmentation mask. We already know that head and abdomen are elliptical in shape, while femur is oblong. We use this information to fit an ellipse on the head and abdomen segmentation mask, and we fit a bonding box on the femur mask. The measurements which we can obtain from this region fitting will be in a pixel unit but we want these measurements to be in millimeter units. So for this, we perform scale recovery. Every ultrasound machine has a caliper, which can be automatically detected for obtaining the millimeter to pixel ratio. In our work, we use template matching for detecting the ruler markers on the caliper visible on the ultrasound images. The ruler markers, which were visible in our data set were 50, 10, and 5 millimeter markers, which are shown here. Please note that this is dependent on the ultrasound machine interface use. The ultrasound data we have was captured from a GE Watson E8 machine. The obtained scaling ratio is multiplied with the pixel measurement to get the estimates in millimeter unit. The complete auto FP framework is shown in this image. The uh, fitted ellipse circumference uh, in the abdomen and head uh, planes gives the estimate for abdomen and head circumferences. On these fitted ellipse, the major and minor axis give the estimate for the remaining measurements. As for the femur, uh, the diagonal of the bonding box gives the estimate for femur length. We obtained data from 42 pregnancies, in total around 350 ultrasound images of the standard planes. 
the data was collected at University College London Hospital. Patients attending the uh, hospital for ultrasound examination were enrolled and the data obtained was pseudo-anonymized by a clinical fellow after obtaining a written consent and ethical approval. The ground truth annotation for segmentation were obtained using the VI annotation tool, while the clinically measured, uh, obtained measurements were provided by the clinician. Note that uh, within this data, we observed large in intra-class variability, especially in the case of femur measurement, which we can observe in some of these sample images. Multi-class segmentation results are shown in this slide. We used four-fold cross-validation applied on deep lab V3 plus and GeoNet models. The models were trained with mobile net V2 and ResNet 50 backbone with either cross entropy or weighted cross entropy loss. From the analysis that we performed based on mean intersection of Azunia, we found that deep lab V3 with mobile net and weighted cross entropy gave the overall best mean IOU performance. Next, we picked the best performing architecture uh, configuration from this table and applied the fetal biometry estimation on uh, their uh, mask. Fetal biometry estimation results are shown in this slide where we perform comparison of the best performing segmentation model and report the absolute error between the clinically measured and predicted fetal biometry. Absolute errors in measurements were the lowest in the case of deep lab V3. We note that deep lab V3 was the overall best performing segmentation model as well, as we saw in the previous slide. In the case of femur length, the obtained uh, errors were comparable, but in the case of deep lab V3, the, the number of outliers were fewer compared to the other two methods. Qualitative analysis of the three segmentation models under analysis is shown in this slide where we can see scenarios where either one or all segmentation models fail in predicting the right segmentation mask. We can make two observations from this slide. First is that inaccurate segmentation results in fetal biometry estimation failure. And the second is that if the captured ultrasound is not of good quality, the segmentation mask can be inaccurate, and uh, which can result in inaccurate measurements. To conclude, we showed that deep lab V3 plus outperformed other models despite large intra-class variability in the data. We do believe that there is a need for capturing more data, especially in the case of femur length, that will allow us to better capture the intra-class variability in the femur plane uh, case. We also observed that the, that the obtained errors were lower than the 15% error permissible during routine clinical assessment, which shows a positive sign towards clinical translation of our proposed method. As for future work, we are developing an online uh, framework for the detection of standard planes and for the estimation of fetal biometry from ultrasound videos. We are also looking into expert and novices comparison with the proposed auto FP framework. This will help uh, us in obtaining evidence towards supporting clinical translation. This is the end of my talk. Thank you so much for your attention. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I will be also present at the Mackay oral and poster session and would be happy to answer your questions during that time. Thank you.